Hey guys, welcome back. This video will include page three, and page three looks like this one. We are going to cover number 11 through number 16. But before I start, I do want you to turn back to page two and look at number six. One of my students found an error because I work a little too fast, and it happens. So, I'm going to erase this solution right here, okay? As I'm doing this, I hope you guys are looking to see what that mistakes could possibly be. And while you're doing that, I am also going to erase this part as well. That's where I made my mistakes. So I will do that part in blue, okay? So what I had done was I had subtract the two, but it should have been add. And when I add, it changes everything here. So negative 34 minus 34 is negative 68. Uh, let's do that in blank. I think it'll show up a little bit better. So negative 68. So negative 68 times 2 comes out to be positive 136. 136 minus 131 is 5. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10 with a 60 left over. Okay? So your final answer is 6. Oh. 6x to the third plus 17x squared minus 68x plus 5 plus 60 over x plus 2. Okay, so let me rewrite that so you guys can see it a little bit better. There we go. Alright, so sorry about that, but great job for catching that. Good job, guys. All right, let's go to page three. On page three, number 11 and 12, we are going to continue to factor and solve. All right, take a look at your terms. One, two, three, any greatest common factor that you can factor out. Since you can't, but it has three terms, I'm going to go ahead and factor like this, like you've done with a trinomial. Don't forget, your a is a 2, okay? Factors of x to the fourth, x squared, x squared. 2 times negative 27 is negative 54. What two numbers do you know multiply to give you negative 54, and it's going to subtract to give you 15, okay? Now, if you don't know, there is a little trick that you can use your calculator, but it's really, really good to please learn your multiplications, okay? So here's the trick. What you can do is, let me clear this part and this one as well. You can type 54 divided by x, just like that, okay? And if you go to the table, not the graph, oh, sorry. Oh, hang on, it's still processing. Let me go to the table. Now, if you look, do you see where two of those numbers is going to multiply to give you 54, but it's going to subtract to give you 15, 3 and 18? That's something that you can do to help yourself, okay? But I, I want you to personally please learn your multiplication facts. All right, so that's going to be 3, negative 3, positive 18, because I wanted a positive 15. Now, don't forget to divide each one of them by your A value, which is 2. Now we're going to solve. Set each one of these equal to 0. And we're going to solve. Add two, 3 halves to both sides. Okay, don't even need to do bottoms up. Take a square root, and when you square root something, you have two solutions. Square root of 3 over square root of 2. Make sure you rationalize. That means multiply by the denominator. And x comes out to be plus or minus square root of 6 over 2. Factors of 6 is 3 and 2, nothing to simplify with. That's as simple as it goes. Set this one equal to 0 also. So x squared plus 18 over 2 is 9 equal to 0. x squared is negative 9. Take a square root, plus or minus, square root of 9 is negative 3. That negative comes out, so plus or minus i, square root of and there you have your four solutions for number 11, okay? Number 12, three terms as well. It is a one, so I don't need to worry about my a. Factors of x to the 14, x to the seventh, 
x to the 7. Remember, when you multiply, you add to your exponentials. Two numbers have multiplied to give you negative 40 and is going to subtract to give you 3. Okay? So, think about some of your numbers. How about 5 and 8? And 5 will be negative. Minus 5 plus 8. Set each one equal to 0. I'm going to do the first factor. x to the 7 minus 5 equal to 0. Add 5. Okay? Take the seventh root of 5. Now, 7 is an odd root. So if this is positive, it stays positive. If it's negative, it stays negative. So this comes out to be the seventh root of 5. Just like that. Let's solve for the other one. x to the 7 plus 8 equals 0. Subtract 8. Okay. So take a seventh root of it. So if that's a negative, it'll come out as a negative seventh root of there you have your solutions. Okay? Number 13. Alright. It says, write a polynomial equation in standard form that contains the following. So, if you would, go back to all the things you've learned. Alright, here are your roots. So this is basically x is equal to 3. This one has a multiplicity of 2, so x is equal to 4. That means you got two of them. That's what that means. And we're going to write in standard form. Standard form goes from highest degree to your lowest degree. So if I were to set this equal to 0, so this would be x minus 3. This one would be x minus 4. And I would have two of them. Okay? Now your choice in how, what order you want to do it. I'm actually going to do this first two first. This one and this one, and I'll come back to that one. So x times x is x squared. x times negative 4 is negative 4x. Okay? Negative 3 times x is minus 3x. Negative 3 times negative 4 is plus 12. See that? Combine your like terms. So x squared minus 7x plus 12. Okay? Now, I'm going to bring down the x minus 4, right there. And let's go ahead and continue to distribute. We're going to keep multiplying. So I'm going to take this first one times all of this. So, x squared times x, x to the third. x squared times negative 4, negative 4x squared. Okay? Second term, negative 7x times x, negative 7x squared. Negative 7x times negative 4, plus 28x. And I'm going to keep going. 12. 12 times x is positive. 12. 12 times negative 4 is negative 48, equal to 0. Combine your like terms. From highest degree to your lowest. I got an x to the third. You can mark it off as you're doing it. These are like terms. Negative 4 minus 7 is negative 11x squared. These are like terms. 28 plus 12 is positive. 30x. Bring down your negative 48, and there you have your equation. Okay? One step at a time. Please be very careful with your numbers. Please be careful with your adding and subtracting, multiplying and dividing. Those signs means a big deal. All right. Let's look at number 14. Do not be scared of fractions. Okay? This one right here is the same thing as x equals negative 3 over 5. And then you have x is it's equal to 0 3 times. And this third one, you have x is equal to 2. So now let's go ahead and write it in parentheses form. Okay? So this one right here is the same thing as x plus 3 over 5 equal to 0. Now, I don't like to deal with fractions, so I'm going to move it up. There is your bottom set. So this right here is 5x plus 3. See that right there? I got x times x times x, which is the same thing as x to the third. Then you got x minus 2, so guess what this is? x, I'm sorry, x is equal to 2, so x minus 2 equal to 0. Basically, I subtract 0 on both sides. Okay? Now let's multiply. Choose which one you want to do. I'm actually going to do this one and this one first. 
and I'll deal with the x cubed later. So if you want to, you can bring it down and deal with it later. x to the fifth times x, okay? So I'm actually going to rewrite it. So this might be where you can see much more easily. See how I just moved that over? Here we go. x times x to the times, blah, excuse me, x times 5x, 5x squared. x times 3, positive 3x. Negative 2 times 5x, negative 10x. Negative 2 times positive 3, negative 6. Okay? Combine your like terms. So you got 5x squared minus 7x minus 6. Now let's distribute our x to the third. x to the third times 5x squared is 5x to the fifth. x to the third times negative 7x is negative 7x to the fourth. x to the third times negative 6 is negative 6x to the third. All of that equal to zero. And you have gone from highest degree to your lowest degree. Okay? Number 15. It says, find all the zeros, so x is equal to something. State the multiplicity and the behavior at the x-axis. So, this part right here means it's either a cross, a bounce, or a wave, which we talked about in class. Then sketch the graph. No calculator on this part, so keep that in mind. There might be two parts on your test, okay? Alrighty, first of all, I'm going to set this one equal to zero, so x is equal to zero. Your multiplicity is a 1. See how your exponent is a 1? And it's going to cross. Okay? Next one. x plus 1 is equal to 0. So x is equal to negative 1. Your multiplicity is a 4. It's your exponent. This is going to be a bounce. So if it's even. 2, 4, 6, 8. It's going to be a bounce. This one's going to be a little flatter bounce. This one x plus 5 is equal to 0, so x is equal to negative 5. Multiplicity is a 1. There's an understood 1 there, and this is going to be a plus. Okay? Knowing all that, we can kind of graph. And there's a few things that we need to know as well. So, first of all, let's learn about our leading coefficient. Okay? You got a 2 times a 1 times a 1. So what's a positive times a positive times a positive? This is going to be a positive number. What does that mean? That means it's going to end up here. Okay? That's what that means. The other thing that you need to know is also your degree. This is where you add all your exponents together. So you got a 1 plus 4 plus 1, which comes out to be 6. This is an even number. What does that mean? Well, that means is I'm going to end in the positive, so I'm going to start in the positive. That's exactly what that means. Okay? So now let's kind of graph and see where our graph's going to be. 0, that's a cross. Negative 1, It's a bounce. Are you seeing how I'm writing these to help me? Negative 5. Oh, you know what? I'm going to change something real quick. I didn't think ahead and give myself some room. So let me get rid of this one. Okay. Excuse me. Let's make that one a negative 5. That's going to be a cross. And here's my negative 1, and that's going to be a bounce. All right. And 0 is going to be a cross. I say I'm going to start up here, and I'm going to cut through. So I just cut through negative 5. And then I'm going to go up to negative 1, and what's happening? It's going to bounce. See how it just bounce? And then I'm going to cut across at 0. And there I have my graph. Start it where you thought you would, and end it where you thought you would. Even roots, not, excuse me, even exponents, even degree ending in the positive direction. And there you have your graph. Okay? Number 16. Here we go. Let's take this one. Negative 3 is equal to 0. Not. Okay? So don't worry about that one. x is equal to 1 half with a multiplicity of 3, and that is a wave. 
x is equal to 4 multiplicity of 1. You might want to write a 1 to help you. That's a cross. Okay. x is equal to negative 3 multiplicity of 6. That's a balance. x is equal to negative 8 multiplicity of 1. Notice I keep writing my 1 to help me. That is a cross. Okay? Alrighty, now knowing all that, let's go ahead and find our leading coefficient. So, you got a negative, the 2 is a positive, 1 here is a positive, 1 here is a positive, 1 here is a positive. So you got a positive times a positive times a positive times a negative, this is going to give you a negative. That means my graph is going to end down here. Okay. Now let's take a look at our degree. We need to know if it's going to start in the second quadrant or the first quadrant. Sorry, in the second quadrant or the third quadrant. Okay. All right. What's our multiplicity? Three plus one. Let me show you. Three plus one plus six plus one. So three plus one is four. Plus six is ten. Plus one more is eleven. That is an odd number. Okay. So odd, so if I'm going to end down here, I'm going to start on quadrant two. That's what that means, okay? So let's go ahead and mark some of these. My biggest number is a negative eight. Cross, next number is a negative three. Bounce, next one is one half. Way, oops, I forgot to write one half, excuse me. The other one's a four, cross. All right, let's go ahead and graph. I start where? I start up here. So that means I start here. I'm going to cut through. Bounce at 3. See the bounce? Wave. Remember how I told you to make it a little flat first? Bring this up to it. Let it be flat. Goes out the other way, and I'm going to cross. And there I have my graph. Okay? Doesn't look pretty, but you're just trying to see how it acts at the x-axis. Thank you guys. Have a good day. I'll try to get you other ones done.